So I was in the process of refurbishing a piece of tube-based equipment here, and I noticed that one of the miniature tubes in it uh, was suffering from something called filament flash. And I'll go into what it is in a minute. I also, I'm not, um, not going to identify the piece of equipment because I haven't finished the refurbishment yet, but it will be in an upcoming video. Nevertheless, filament flash is something that can affect any uh, tube-based equipment. And so I'll also show you what I did to, uh, to cure it. So what is filament flash? In a nutshell, uh, first, I think the best thing to do is to demo it. Then we'll explain what's going on. So to demo what's going on here with filament flash, uh, it's pretty easy to show. Uh, so keep your eye on the leftmost tube here. That's a 12AU7. It's a dual filament um, miniature tube. And uh, it is perfect. Everything is perfectly stone cold on this uh, piece of equipment. So you'll see what happens when the inrush current hits that uh, that filament. And you can compare it to the 12AU7, say that's on the right hand side. So without further ado, here I go. I've by and I have disabled uh, the over the uh, inrush current protection. So here we go. Three, two, one. So there, uh, now the unit is on. Uh, both, all the filaments are glowing nicely. You can see the one on the right, the one on the left is also glowing, uh, although it's a little bit less visible. And in fact, the tube does work perfectly well once warmed up. So what just caused that 12AU7's filament to flash like that and go, go glow bright for a short period of time and then, and then dim out. Well, when a tube filament is stone cold, uh, its resistance is low. Um, and when its resistance is low, it will draw a lot more current for a brief period of time until it warms up. What filament flashes is when a filament on a tube develops a, a hot, what we'll call a hot spot. In other words, an area of, of higher resistance compared to the rest of the filament. So as the inrush current which could be 6.3 volts, could be 12 volts, whatever the tube is rated for. Uh, as that voltage slams into the filament, that hot spot bears the brunt of all that current because uh, it has a very low resistance for a short period of time until things heat up. Uh, then as you saw, the rest of the filament catches up, uh, starts glowing and the hot spot dims and, and the whole filament now glows at, a, at its normal intensity. The problem with this, and uh, I'll credit Mr. Carlson's lab and Mr. Carlson for, for suggesting this, is that if the filament is going to fail, not that it's expected to fail, but if it's going to fail, it will be more likely to fail than not uh, if it's suffering from this, and it will be more likely to fail at that hot spot. So to extend the life of this tube, which is, appears to be, whose filament already appears to be suffering, um, the, the inrush current suppression uh, is, is worthwhile. Here is the, in, the AC input side of this piece of equipment. Um, it's been rewired and the two things that you can see, first of all are these two guys. These two guys are 0.01 microfarad. Um, I believe they're 300 volt. These are safety capacitors so they're classified as X1, Y2. Uh, one of them is going from neutral to ground and the other one is going from line to ground. These, were in these are, are intended to eliminate an, any uh, RFI that is going to try and sneak in through the power cord into the equipment. Uh, they're not relevant to uh, filament flash at all. What is relevant though is this. Uh, this is the fan favorite uh, CL90. Um, this is a negative temperature coefficient resistor, meaning it starts out uh, at a higher resistance, about 100, 110 ohms uh, when stone cold. And then as it uh, heats up, because all resistors heat up, its resistance goes down dramatically, down to maybe an ohm or two, depending on, on frankly, how hot it gets, which is really dependent on the current. Uh, so this is what is providing our uh, input, um, in, input surge or... Um, protection.
Now I'm going to slide over here and show you the um, the CL90, which is our inrush protection um, positive, uh, negative temperature coefficient resistor. So uh, as you see here, I have it uh, jumpered, which means I disabled it. But now I'm going to uh, unjumper it. So it is back in circuit. It is cold and all the tubes are are now cold. So I'm going to go back here and back where we were and I'm going to run the exact same sequence. So again, uh, keep your eye on the 12AU7 which was uh, the subject of filament flash and now I'm going to turn on the uh, the piece of equipment. 3, 2, 1, contact! And there was no flash, um, and the tube is glowing, uh, as so is the uh, the one on the right. Don't know if we can kind of see it there a little bit. Um, and again, the equipment works perfectly well, but that inrush current limiter has totally eliminated uh, the uh, the filament flash issue. Are there any downsides to uh, putting? Uh, a CL90 or, or other NTC inrush protection uh, onto a piece of equipment or of any kind, tube or otherwise. So again, keep in mind that this is wired in right now um, immediately after the hot side coming in, the fuse and the on-off switch. Then that hot, then that goes into and through this um, this CL90, and then onto the rest of the equipment, namely the uh, the primary of the main power transformer. So there are there are a couple of uh, things to keep in mind. Not down, not so much downsides, but certainly uh, trade offs. First of all, is perhaps that this actually runs quite hot. Um, it's too in normal steady state operation. Once it's warmed up and its resistance has gone down, it is still dropping some voltage, not a lot, but a little bit, and uh, so it does run hot. And but nevertheless, it is running within its listed specs. The specs for the CL series of NTCs uh, have to do are limited strictly by their allowable current in amperes and their maximum operating temperature. So that's really what limits. Uh, how how much you can push through these, and this one is well within its limits. Uh, I actually measured the amperage going through uh, this piece of equipment, the AC amperage, and it's on the order of on the order of half an amp. Um, and the CL90 is rated at two amps. Um, the temperature, although although too hot to touch, is still well within uh, the CL90's rated uh, maximum temperature or maximum operating temperature. So in addition to the in addition to it running hot, uh, of course it is dropping a little bit of line voltage. Um, so obviously my my line voltage here is a nominal 120, but during the day it varies. Uh, sometimes it gets as low as 115. Sometimes it goes to 120, 122. Uh, that's usually where it runs around. Of course that depends on not only what else is going on in the house at my bench, but it's also what's going on in the neighborhood. And how the uh, my electric utility is is dealing with those fluctuations, um, but so the point is the, the voltage drop here is well within uh, the normal f fluctuation of what my line voltage is. So there's really no effect on the operation of this equipment. Since this is tube based equipment, that does translate into a little bit less B plus, but it is uh, it's really not noticeable. Finally, uh, and of course, one last thing to keep in mind is because uh, the heaters in all the um, tubes are coming up more slowly, uh, the equipment takes a little bit longer to come up to, well, operating. You know, kind of an old-time analog tube-based TVs from the 50s, you turn it on and you had to wait a while uh, to get a picture and sound. Well, here, you have to wait a little bit longer, and so what used to take perhaps 15 seconds for the unit to come up and operate now takes maybe 30, 25, 30 seconds. But again, uh, we're not turning this on and off all day, uh, so it's perfectly acceptable. So that's really, those are really the trade-offs uh, when installing something like a CL90 
uh, into the uh, onto the hot side of your incoming AC. Perhaps by now you've guessed that the equipment in question is in fact a tube-based oscilloscope. There's one other side effect that's kind of interesting about when putting the CL90 on the primary side of the AC line uh, going in, and that is that it seems to turn out that not all tubes uh, will start conducting at exactly the same time, particularly depending on their age and their condition and how their filament vo voltage might be ramping up, uh, as in the case with the CL90. So it turns out that some sections of the equipment may start operating before other sections. And so in this demo, I'm going to show you exactly how that manifests itself. So in the next clip, keep in mind a couple of things. First of all, that in this scope, the horizontal amplifier is being run by a 6AU7 tube, but interestingly, not the same 6AU7 tube we've been talking about, not the one with the uh, filament hotspot, just a, another plain old 6AU7, which appears on, uh, otherwise to be operating normally. The vertical section is being run by uh, separately by a 6 BQ7. And so when you, the clip starts, uh, you'll hear me click on the scope. You'll be able to see how long it takes the scope to warm up, all the tubes to warm up, and you'll see something interesting about which section comes on first and then which section comes on afterwards. So in this scope, um, the sweep generator is run by 12, one 12 AU7, and that's the one with the hot spot that we saw earlier. The horizontal amplifier is run by a totally separate 12 AU7, which does not exhibit any hot spot or otherwise unnatural behavior, except that it comes on late. How did I know which of those two was the one that was coming on late, that it was the horizontal amp and not the sweep generator? Because while I was waiting for the horizontal there, to show up, uh, the horizontal position control had no effect. Whereas if it was the sweep 12AU7 that was coming on late, uh, there would have been no sweep, but I still would have been able to move a dot back and forth horizontally with the horizontal uh, position control. If you're interested in learning a whole lot more about tube filament flash, or tube heater flash, uh, however you wish to call it, uh, I can recommend one uh, YouTube video from who else but Mr. Carlson of Mr. Carlson's Lab. I'll put a link in the description because the, uh, the, the video is actually a little bit hard to search for. But in it, uh, Mr. Carlson does, does a very good explanation of what causes uh, f filament flash and um, a couple of solutions that he's come up uh, to mitigate it. Uh, what you're what you're seeing in this video in my video is a totally different approach to mitigating it but from what I see uh, quite successfully so I do recommend uh, you check out uh, Mr. Carlson's lab video on, on this subject and again link in the description